Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for this month's Open Alex webinar. We're really excited today to be doing a joint webinar with Make Data Count and DataSite on finding, tracking, and analyzing research data sets in Open Alex. I'm going to be presenting today, but a lot of the presentation is going to come from my colleague, Iracha Puebla from Make Data Count. So I'm going to turn it over to her to start the presentation, and then I'll come in at the end. If you haven't been here before, Feel free to put your questions live in the Q&A chat, but we'll get to them at the end for a Q&A session where we'll turn off the recording. So, Eracha, over to you. Yeah. Sure, thank you so much, Kyle, and to OpenAlex for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, so yes, I'm Eracha Puebla from uh, Make Data Count. I'm gonna be talking about this initiative on data site and one of my favorite topics, data citations. So, you know, everything today is about data. Um, right, as a brief introduction for any of you who may not be familiar with DataSide, we're a nonprofit that was created in 2009. Uh, we have a vision to connect research and advanced knowledge, and we do this by working with research institutions across the globe to provide the means to register, find, site, connect, and reutilize research outputs. Concretely, the activities and services that DataSide provides are focused on tools to create and manage persistent identifiers, uh, PIDs, so specifically we work with DOIs, as well as their associated metadata. And then we work to integrate these services so that we facilitate the discovery and reuse of research outputs and resources. And something that I wanted to highlight in the context of the work that DataSide does is the fact that we cover a wide range of uh, research outputs. Essentially, we aim to provide services that capture the diversity of open outputs that researchers and others create through research activities. Uh, the DataSide metadata schema includes 30 resource types. So obviously, we do include data sets is the focus of the, of the webinar today. But we also cover many other research outputs going all the way from uh, preprints, uh, software, thesis, dissertations, uh, books, uh, all the way to data management plans, study registrations, and many other outputs and resources. In terms of looking at the work we do for research data, we have uh, within the data site records, 18 million data sets registered with DOIs. Um, this is important in the context of making data sets citable and discoverable. It provides for researchers, for example, a way of getting a citation for their data sets and making that more discoverable as well through the uh, tools and platforms that index uh, um, data as part of the content that they include. I also wanted to mention briefly how we handle the metadata for DOIs. Um, obviously, this is also applicable to, to, to research data as part of the data site metadata schema. We have a metadata schema that applies to all of the resource types that we cover. This uh, schema includes 20 properties. Some are mandatory, others recommended and, and optional. Uh, the mandatory ones, as you may expect, includes the persistent identifier, the DOI for the object, but also the creator, so the author, title, publisher, publication year, as well as the resource type. Essentially, this is what we designate was the object that is receiving the DOI. Um, another property within the uh, data site metadata that I wanted to mention that falls under the recommended uh, category as the related identifier. I wanted to highlight this because I'm going to be coming back to it uh, when we start talking about citations. The related identifier property within the data site metadata schema enables creating those relationships between the object that is receiving the DOI and another object that has an identifier. So this is the context of the data site metadata schema. Uh, some of you, if you work with uh, in the journal context, may be familiar with Crossref, which is another DOI registration agency with which uh, many publishers and journals work to receive the DOIs for their uh, journal publications. Crossref has its own schemas for specific records. I listed a few items there in terms of what they require for journal publications. Um, again, similar components about the journal information and the antical information. And obviously, Crossref also works to collect metadata for citations. They provide the citation list uh, property as something that, again, they recommend journals provide. 
Um, so they also work to create those links between objects through citations. And something else that I wanted to highlight is that both DataCite and Crossref work together in a service called Event Data. That is a common store of links between objects that have DOIs. So essentially, both Crossref and DataCite try to identify links between objects that have DOIs, and then they will store them together in Event Data to make that available to the community. I have already talked about making links between uh, objects and specifically links as well to research uh, data. Um, as part of the Make Data Count initiative, we, we care quite a bit about this because we believe that in addition to supporting open data practices for sharing and accessing research data, we should also look at evaluating what happens with these open data sets that we are putting out there and making available to the community. Um, and this is the context of the Make Data Count initiative. We have a goal to uh, uh, promote the, the development and adoption of responsible metrics, uh, the responsible metrics for open data. So that we enable the evaluation and reward of research data usage and impact. Make Data Count has three main areas of work. The first is that we lead the development of open infrastructure to capture information as to how open data is being used. And also so that we can share that with the community to gain that understanding. And we work closely with different groups and initiatives in the community to also develop best practices, standards, and resources to support those behaviors and those practices to capture this information. We also engage closely with the community to raise awareness about the importance of responsible evaluation of open data and the responsible development of metrics for data through uh, outreach and campaigns. And importantly, we, we believe that for metrics to be responsible and meaningful, they need to be contextualized. So we have collaborated in the past and continue to do so with uh, groups of bibliometricians who are studying uh, practices and trends uh, around data sharing and data reuse so that we can help build this evidence that is going to provide this context uh, for the different metrics that make them useful for a diversity of users. I've mentioned data metrics, and I wanted to just spend a few moments uh, uh, briefly summarizing what we mean by data metrics. Here we are talking about meaningful and contextualized quantitative or qualitative measures of how open data cells are accessed or utilized. And there are a number of measures of data usage that come under this. Um, probably, again, I have already mentioned data citations, and this is something that you may have heard before, the structure references to data as part of another uh, scholarly output. Uh, make data count has done work related to data citations, but also around developing resources and tools to capture information on normalized counts for views and downloads. And we also know that there are a number of ways in which users interact, analyze, share um, uh, data. And we know that there will be other measures of usage that we need to continue developing in the future as practices evolve and mature. So we are very keen on working together with the community on keeping an eye on what are these new interactions with data and how we can help develop measures that capture those interactions. We believe that data metrics are very important, again, in the context of open data and open science practices. On the one hand, data metrics are an important element to help us create incentives uh, for data sharing by making that rewarding for the data producers. Essentially, these metrics are something that can help us provide acknowledgement for researchers who produce data and create this, that incentive for more data to be shared and cited and mentioned and then again encourage other communities to come along and share more of the data they produce. Importantly, again, for example, when we think around data citations, they also fit very closely within efforts around transparency and reproducibility of research, because it is important to provide that link, that relationship to the data underlying other articles or other reports to enable the community to always trace back what was the data that was underlying that work and also scrutinize it as needed. The other important aspect of uh, data metrics is that they're also key to help us collectively start understanding what is the impact 
of the open data that's being produced and, and help us make informed decisions as to what, how do we need to iterate on best practices for open data to maximize its value, but also help us make informed decisions for around open data policies, funded that may be required to support these practices, infrastructure, et cetera. It's a way of showcasing all the fantastic work done by repositories, for example, not only by publishing data, but preserving and curating data sets. And again, helping create this evidence that, uh, so that we can start understanding how open data is impacting research endeavors, um, where more funding is needed, and how all of this hopefully translates into societal benefit. So for the remainder, I'm going to be focusing a bit more on data citations specifically. As I mentioned, there are different data metrics. This is only one of them, uh, but there are a number of things that make data citations quite interesting. One is that a citation establishes this relationship between the data set as another object, signaling that data has been used as part of the work that led to this other research output. And the other thing that I find often useful when talking about data evaluation and, and referring to citations specifically is that this often is um, something more intuitive when talking about metrics um, it, when we are speaking to researchers and those who complete uh, evaluation processes. So researchers care a lot about the citations to their outputs, and this includes data sets. Um, but also citations are part of a number of evaluation processes. You know, we can have conversations as to how to make this a responsible uh, evaluation process. But again, this is something that comes across as more intuitive as a metric of hopefully evaluating a reach of an object, evaluating reach of open data for those who are completing impact and evaluation uh, processes. So I'm going to just spend a few moments coming back to the data side metadata schema to uh, dive a bit deeper into how we handle citations as part of the DOI metadata register with data site. As I mentioned, we have a property under the metadata schema that allows creating these relationships between the data set and another uh, object with an identifier. This is the related identifier property. And under this property, there is a property that allows um, designating the type of relationship that exists between those two objects. And again, the, there are a number of relationships that can be designated under the data site metadata schema, but we use three specific ones to designate citations. And these are the ones that you see listed there. Again, and the, the, the relation, the, the two, mirror um, relationships that you see there is because it depends on how, which is the object that is designated in the citation in which direction we are uh, designating that relationship between the objects. But through this metadata, we can capture again the relationships between a data set and for example, an article that is citing it um, and create that link. And this also fits into the citation counts for the data set. And importantly, uh, another aspect of the services that DataSite provides is that we not only capture that metadata through the, through the DOI metadata, the important thing is that we want to make sure that this is also uh, of benefit for the community. So we have services to expose those data citations for others who may want to, uh, again, interrogate or reuse this information. These uh, data citations can be found through the data site APIs programmatically, and we also have a search portal called data site commons that has uh, uh, records for works that have DOIs and will provide citations where they exist for individual records. As I also mentioned earlier, both data site and cross ref provide links between uh, objects with identifiers into the joint service event data. So essentially any data citations that we identify through metadata will also be stored in event data. And this, one thing I wanted to highlight now at this point is the fact that we have a fantastic open infrastructure that is helping us make these links between data sets and other objects, but we know that it's so far has only gotten us this far in terms of identifying the usage of data sets as part of uh, different research endeavors. We know we are not currently collecting all the instances of data citations that are happening. This is due to a number of reasons. 
One is that researchers from different communities have different behaviors and norms as to how they will cite and mention data in their articles, for example. Uh, some of them will include a, a structure citation in the traditional sense, and some others may mention it in the method section or in a data availability statement or even in, as a footnote. Um, we also know that even though we have best practices and workflows established to capture uh, metadata for citations to data, this is not necessarily optimized in all cases. For example, not all journals are optimized to capture this uh, metadata for citations to data sets. And in addition, this is a problem that we haven't been alone in thinking about. There are a number of groups that have been trying to identify these links and relationships and citations between data sets and other outputs. And they may have been creating their own pools of citations for their own purposes. Uh, this means that we have a somewhat a scattered ecosystem with pockets of data citations in different locations, including locations that sometimes are not openly available to the community. So we know that we need to create easier and more comprehensive ways to make this information about the bigger picture of data citations at the scale available uh, to the community. And this is the motivation for our project uh, to build a data citation corpus. Our, our goal here is to develop a comprehensive corpus that will bring together data citations from different sources into a centralized uh, resource that is publicly accessible to the community. We are working on this thanks to uh, general support from the Welcome Trust, and it's a project that we started last year. And again, this is pretty much a collaborative effort because its success relies on contributions by different groups and communities that have already been thinking about the importance of data citations and have been working to identify uh, citations to data sets in different ways. So the idea for the corpus is that we will bring together the citations that, uh, to data that we already have through the metadata deposit workflows that I was just describing before. But we also want to leverage the work that different groups are doing through a number of methodologies to identify these data citations. This includes, for example, curation efforts by certain groups that have been very active trying to identify these links to data sets, but also leverage the developments that have taken place around uh, machine learning methodologies, for example, to find new citations to data for example, by interrogating the full text of publications. And this is something that we uh, got started working on as we got going on the project um, uh, last year through a collaboration with the John Zuckerberg Initiative Open Science Team that have been working on leveraging uh, machine learning models to identify uh, mentions to open outputs as part of the full text of publications. So this was a very interesting uh, partnership for us because it was a great way to expand the citations that could, could include data set. Obviously, it works with data sets that uh, get uh, DOIs assigned, but it was an opportunity for us to expand this to data that uh, is associated with accession numbers. So what we did as part of this collaboration was create a single store of data citations that included the citations coming through DOI metadata again, through the workflows that I was just describing, but also a pool of citations that some Zuckerberg Initiative identified by applying, by applying a cyber-based uh, model to the full text of 5 million uh, articles utilizing the full text index in Europe PMC, uh, which indexes biomedical publications. And then they apply that model to try to, to find uh, mentions to data, again, using the identifier string. So either trying to find the OIs for data sets or the, uh, the accession number associated uh, for data coming from certain repositories. And they apply this model to the full text of the articles and again, tr to try to extract these identifiers for data sets within the snippets of, of the text that would include it. Um, and thanks to this, we have been able to do a first release for the corpus uh, that we have set on the, with the community on Senodo. Um, we have also developed a dashboard. I'm going to 
hit here play and hopefully the video will move and display it, this dashboard is just a high level uh, visualization of the current content of the again the first release of, of the corpus that includes a million citations coming from to million citations to data uh, coming from the DOI metadata as well as 8 million uh, data mentions identified through the CCI methodology of uh, mining the full text of articles. And as you can see from the dashboard, we, we have a number of visualizations. This is really high level just to give you an idea of what the content is, what the citations are over time, how they are distributed by publishers, and there is also the option of doing some filtering per different facets. We know that there is a lot of work to still to be done to both optimize the citations that are currently in this first uh, file that we show because there are some, for example, some false positives that we want to clean up. And there are also some metadata gaps that we are also keen on, on working on related to affiliation information and subject level uh, classification. And another thing that we are very keen on, on working on in the next steps is um, this was an initial step to bring uh, data citations from also data sets with accession numbers, but we want to continue these conversations with groups that may have additional citations, perhaps from specific disciplines or through different methodologies that we can also incorporate into the corpus. Um, so we are quite excited about the project. We know it's early days, but our vision for this is that hopefully as we continue to make it as comprehensive as we can in, in its store and coverage of data citations, we want this to be a tool that researchers can use to learn more about the impact of their data sets, but importantly, also a tool that those who complete research evaluation can bring into their processes for evaluating data usage, the reach and impact of research data. And we also want this to be obviously a source for further meta research and bibliometric analysis that can build the evidence around how data is being shared and used. And with that, sorry, I'm having the problem with a jumpy, jumpy mouse. Just wanted to finish with an invitation for all of you to get involved with the project. If you're interested, if you have data citations, please let us know. We want to hear from you. Also, please do visit the file we have on Zenodo and give us feedback on this. Uh, we're also very happy to discuss the project in more detail with you. If you have any questions, I, I link to a brief form. It's very brief, I promise, uh, that you can fill up and I'll be happy to follow up with you or you can sign up to the Make Data Can newsletter. I also wanted to mention uh, another engagement opportunity that we have coming up. We will host the Make Data Can Summit in September. This is an opportunity co to convene that many people who are working in this space, not only open data, but specifically in trying to understand how we can responsibly evaluate open data and develop metrics that fit into this. This will happen in London in person in September. So invite everybody with an interest in the topic to join us there. And with that, I'm going to be handed back to Kyle to speak more about how Open Alex is ingesting data sets um, and, and what they are doing there. Over to you, Kyle. Thank you very much, Aracha. And I'll just um, quickly say, we're looking forward to being at the Make Data Count Summit in September. So looking forward to that. Um, for those of you who have been to my presentations before, I often talk about um, or share a very similar version of the slide saying that basically a scientific knowledge graph, we are ingesting metadata about works um, and other components of the, the research ecosystem. But the way that we're thinking about data sets is as works. So many of these right now are journal articles or conference proceedings or books or things like that. Um, but these are going through our works ingest pipeline. Um, next slide, please, Yeracha. And the reason that we're doing a lot of this is to be able to find uh, specific works. Um, and I've updated the slide to no longer just have publications, but also have little floppy disks, if people in here know what those are, um, dating people there, um, so that you can apply filters to our entire data set, which now has over a quarter billion works, including data sets, to find the specific ones you're looking for, but then also to do analyses by them, like to find which countries are doing the most data sets and, and things like that. Next slide, please. I want to start showing this, and I'm making this available so you can zoom in on it later and, and pause, but at a high level, the way that Open Alex works is we're ingesting metadata from many different sources. So you can see we've got these primary repositories like Crossref, PubMed, Archive, DOAJ, HAL, 
Um, and, and these are where we're getting the primary information that creates a work. And then we go through all the repositories that we have and try and figure out if there's more metadata about them. But really it's it's this important first piece that creates a work in Open Alex. And I'm putting here at the bottom that we're currently adding Datacite as a primary repository. And that's sort of why we're having this conversation. And I say currently because this is going to take some time. We've been working on it a couple of months, but we are um, expecting to be finished this summer. So next slide, please. Just to give you a sense right now, or at least June 8, um, 18th, these are the data sets that we have in Open Alex. You can see over time, there's, there's quite a few. Most of those historically have come from Crossref, and we got about 3 million because there are some data sets that get into Crossref. Um, we got about 30,000 from Microsoft Academic Graph and about 3,000 from PubMed. Um, I mentioned that we're starting to ingest data site. We already have 4 million and that's growing every day. Racha, I believe, said there was 18 million total and that's sort of a, the goal we're going for there. But that does give you a sense of how important data site is for these data sets. This will be the majority of the data sets that we have by far when we finish ingesting. Next slide, please. Oops, sorry, it's on the right It's okay, the jumpy mouse. Um, <laughs> And just to give you a quick update on that timeline, we're doing about 250,000 works per day uh, that we're ingesting. And we're doing that because there's a lot of new things that we're learning as we ingest data site on some differences with things like journals that we're having to make decisions on and, and do some of the own, our own massaging. Um, but we're expecting that to finish mid-August. I put the API call in here so that you can at any point check and see how many we currently have indexed. Um, but another point to say we're prioritizing data sets from data site, but we are going to also be going for the dissertations and the journals because those are really important. But data sets are our, our primary focus on the, the ingest. And you can just see that um, at the bottom, it's indexed in data site. And I'm saying this because we're, in, we're introducing new filters in OpenAlex that will allow you to say, is something indexed in Crossref? Is it indexed in data site? And you can sort of uh, pick those as, as you'd like. Next slide, please. Okay, but when we ingest it, I wanted to spend a moment saying that the current pipeline for when we ingest a new work is to go through all the metadata and try and match to existing entities. Sometimes those entities are the institutions based on the affiliation string or the authors, and sometimes it's um, these aboutness terms that we use a lot. So sustainable development goals, topics, keywords, subject areas, subfields, domains, all of these. And these are all based on text classifiers. Now, normally when we ingest a work uh, for our topic classification scheme, we look at the title, we look at the abstract, we look at the journal, and we look at the references. We don't always have those, for instance, the journal for, for data sets, but we do have a modified version of this classifier that works off just title and description or abstract or summary. And we're using that while we're ingesting grants as well, but this that's what we're doing for um, for these data sets. And this is just an example of one I looked at. So historical distribution of whales, and then you can see there's also a description there. I put that into our, um, our model on Hugging Face, which anyone, by the way, you can go on at any time and put any text in there you want to try it out. And it gives a classification scheme. You can see that sort of third panel of ecology, conservation of marine mammals as the top identified topic, but there's also some others. So then I searched in Open Alex to say like, okay, looking at topic ecology and conservation of mammals um, and data sets, and it turned out there was a lot of them. So I just um, limited to the author's name to show that that work is actually in there and findable or discoverable in the same way that all the other Open Alex works are. Next slide, please. Um, some things to talk about. So um, require title and description fields. Some data sets Actually, we're finding the, the titles are not very helpful for discovery. So an example that we see a lot is myfile.xls. And um, there's lots of reasons why those data sets haven't been thought of as being something that need to be named for discovery, but this is actually how they're being used now. So um, we're trying to communicate and, and, and share with the world that the more you can put information in your title and your description, the better it will be for finding them. But for now, we actually have a little bit of a workaround that in some cases is being helpful. So I give as an example here, and this is a, a data site API record. You can see if you, this is the title name, 109 underscore 0166.tcm. You can't really do much for that for discovery, but actually if we go into the record, we can find that there is more information available in the description, not just in the, the abstract of the summary, but also in the description at the repository. 
So we incorporate that text and you can see we've added radiation induced lung toxicity in mice irradiated in a strong magnetic field. There's lots of words in there that are gonna be good for classifying, um, but we still also added the piece at the end so that people could, could still find that. But now that metadata is going to be useful for using discovery. And so you might see some differences in titles, for instance, in open Alps. Um, next slide, please. Okay, um, Iracha did a great job talking about data set citations, and we're actually gonna be leveraging a lot of the work that they're doing on this corpus, but we do still have our normal processes for when a work comes in. Um, if we can match that work to existing works that have referenced it, we do create a citation linkage as well. And a lot of our works have DOIs, um, cross-ref through data site, and those very often do have references and cited by, and sometimes they don't. Um, but this is limited right now just to the ones that aren't being mentioned in the methods section, but are in the acknowledgement. So we're really looking forward to that work and, and leveraging it. Uh, but because those linkages are there in OpenAlex, you are able to see how many times it's been cited in the OpenAlex corpus. And then you can also do searches on which works have cited this, um, this document. Next slide, please. Okay, so I have a couple of example analyses to sort of round this up, and then hopefully we'll have a good Q&A. Um, but some of the ones I've heard people ask, you know, as a researcher, which data sets are available that might support my work on the impacts of climate change on marine fisheries? I sort of pick from my field base. Uh, you see there's a lot of marine stuff in there. I'm a former marine ecologist. But as an example here, I just put as a filter in OpenAlex, type is data set. And then topic is climate change on marine fisheries. And you can see it brought up data sets and you can see sort of the change over time, but there's already 3,200 data sets that are matching that topic. And we're only at, I think four out of 18 million from data sites. So we're really looking forward to that continuing to grow. But you can see, we also have information on the institutions when it's available and other keywords that are matched to those data sets to help you refine that a little bit more. Next slide, please. So that's sort of a common example researchers ask, but then administrators will say things like, which data sets have McGill University researchers made available and how many citations have they received? And this is more and more important in countries where uh, governments are saying data sets need to be seen as core research outputs. And we are seeing that in many countries, this is becoming a part of the policy for research evaluation. So now the universities are saying, okay, well, which researchers or which data sets do we have and how they've been cited? And so as an example here, I put McGill University and data set, and you can see the 2,300 results and the 90 citations for, for those documents. And you can also see the year over time. It's really in the last few years that there's been a high pickup in this, but also the topic breakdown. So there's quite a bit of legal. And at first I thought, oh, is this a bug? And I looked and there's actually quite a bit of legal data sets that have been made available through McGill. So it was really interesting seeing sort of how the different universities have made different disciplines available. Next slide, please. Okay, another example, which institutions in Australia have the most data sets in ecology, for instance, just this is an example. So type data set, country is, is Australia, and then subfield is ecology. And then you can see over on the right, I've grouped by institution. So you get all of the, the data sets that match that, but then over on the right, you can also see which institutions have made those available. So a lot from the Australian government, um, UNSW Sydney, James Cook, and, and you can click more to see the full list. And you can also click on any of those individually to say, all right, but give me just the ones that are at James Cook University. Next slide, please. And I think this is my last example. Um, yeah, the last one here is which authors at my institutions have made data sets available? And I think this is a really interesting question that a lot of libraries are asking because it helps them understand who is already engaging in this type of practice and who isn't for engagement purposes. You might wanna to go to the, the first group that's doing a lot of this and say, hey, what can we do to help? What's working, what isn't? And you might go to the other group and say, hey, your colleagues are doing this. We noticed you haven't. Is, are there things that we can help to make that easier, that type of conversation? Um, and just as an example here, I put type data set institution Simon Fraser University and I clicked show authors. And here it shows you the authors broken down by the number of data sets that they have available currently in OpenAlex, uh, but then you could click on any one of those. So that was the last example, but Iracha, please, the, the last slide I have, just with some challenges that I wanted to talk about in future directions. Most of the challenges we're seeing so far relate to differences in metadata standards between research data sets and um, other types of scholarly outputs like journals and books. 
that's not surprising. Those are very old workflows that have been around for a very long time. And these are, these are quite new, so there isn't that maturity yet. Um, but also, it, as Iracha mentioned, the um, community behavior is very different in different communities. And so a large part of the work that we're trying to do is, is try and expose that and try and start those conversations. But a couple of specific things I did want to point out, as you'll probably see, titles and descriptions, I, I mentioned that. When we see that, we try and get additional information when we can, when it's available on a repository in some other field, for instance. Um, but the other thing we're trying to do is raise awareness by doing webinars like this and showing that my file.xls doesn't actually help your work get discovered. Um, so we're trying to do more of that work as well. Another important challenge we're going to have, I think, is affiliation data. So right now, of the 7.5 million um, research data sets that we have in OpenAlex, and that includes all of the sources, Crossref, uh, MAG, PubMed, Datasite, 5.5 million of those are missing affiliation data. Um, but 6 million have author metadata, which is great. Um, so that is an important thing, but affiliation is not always complete. And so it's not always a requirement, but it is something that's going to help institutions to do that. So we're starting to have those conversations. But recently, we started looking at, as an example, we noticed that many institutions, as part of the research data management strategy, are minting DOIs for their data sets with a specific prefix and have their own internal repositories. We're, we're looking at whether or not we can use that as a proxy for affiliation. And then if all of them are coming from the same DOI, prefix from this institution because they're minting them, can we assume that that should be the, the institution linkage? We haven't done enough exploratory work to know how well it's going to work out, but we are looking for things like this. And then the last piece, of course, I wanted to end on. Um, academic papers don't always cite data sets in the reference section. We know that. Um, and things like this, this corpus, the citation corpus that they're working on are going to be huge for supplementing what is possible in OpenAlex. And so we're really appreciative and supportive of that work as well. And I think with that, um, we're just saying thank you. Iracha, did you want to say anything in closing? No, yes, thank you so much. And we really appreciate OpenAlex ingesting this information. I think it would be super important to increase the visibility of uh, open data as their own research outputs, as you mentioned. We believe that they should be considered on their own merit. So I, I think it's fantastic. And we want the metadata that data site hosts and what will be part of the corpus to be widely used. So delighted that we can contribute. Yeah, that's great. And it's been really fabulous working with you because we have questions all the time and we get very quick responses, which has been awesome. But with that, I'll thank everyone who attended and those who are watching this afterwards. I'm going to turn off the recording now so we can do a live Q&A. Um, and I see a few questions have already come in. Um, but thank you again, Aracha. That was really helpful and looking forward to continued collaboration.